Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, welcome to those who are joining us in church and for those joining us online. Uh, just some notices to draw your attention to. Um, our praise and ministry service is tonight at 7.30 here, and that's in church only. And then our vestry meeting is on Tuesday at 8.30. Uh, then our, our praise and prayer, uh, we'll be looking at the Bible educational services, and Sam Bammer will be coming to, to speak about his work and then leading us in praying for that. So that's at 8 o'clock on Wednesday. And in our choir practice for the big sing uh, will be at the later time of 9.30. And I'll be in the church here. Uh, Toherdu uh, Methodist Church are having a treasure hunt and barbecue on Friday the 16th of June from uh, 6.30 onwards. So it'd be great to go uh, and support them in uh, this part of their uh, final celebrations for their 150th. Uh, next Sunday, we have our uh, uh, children's service and prize giving, and I will be looking at, is anything too hard for the Lord? And that will be in church as well as online. And prize giving will be after the service. And then uh, uh, the final uh, thing will be a celebration service at three o'clock in Toherdu Methodist Church. And again, uh, you're all warmly invited to that. Uh, Barnabas Aid will be celebrating 30 years, and uh, they're, they're asking people to join them um, for their 30th anniversary service, uh, and that uh, celebration will be on the 1st of July from 3 to 6, and it'll be Belfast Bible College, and uh, if, you, if you want to attend, um, they'd encourage you to, to let them know, and, and we'll give you details of how to do that. Uh, then Mission Possible, uh, there's Holy Bible Club, and that's Toherdu Methodist Church, uh, um, and that will be um, from Monday the 3rd to Friday the 7th uh, of July, um, 10.30 to 12.30. So uh, that you can put that in your diary and encourage um, children to go along to that. And tea and coffee after uh, the service, we hope that you'll uh, continue to enjoy fellowship with us. Let's stand as we have our invitation to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, direct our thoughts, help us to pray, and lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Come, let us worship. And before the children go out to Sunday school, we sing, Be Thou My Vision.
So we confess our sins to God our Father. Let us pray. And together we say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that has passed and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the colic for the first Sunday after Trinity, God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our own mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments, we may please you, both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Romans chapter 4, beginning at verse 13. It was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. For if those who depend on the law are heirs, faith means nothing, and the promise is worthless, because the law brings wrath, and where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, the promise comes by faith so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead, and calls into being things that were not. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and so became the father of many nations. Just as it has been said of him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. That is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words, it was credited to him, were not written for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness. For us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And before the sermon, we sing by faith and faithful one.
Let's pray. Father, I pray you'd take my lips and use them, that you'd speak through them for your namesake and for your glory. Amen. Well, over uh, the next two Sundays, we're going to be looking at, at, at Abraham, and in the story that we see being recorded within Romans, it's uh, reminding us of the promise that Abraham was given that his name was changed from Abraham to Abraham. Uh, before he had this child of the promise uh, through Sarah, they were given, their names were changed from Abraham to Abraham, meaning father of many, and Sarah, meaning mother of many. And so for a period of time, here they were, um, saying to each other, calling each other these names that they hadn't seen fulfilled. God had promised that He was going to give them a child by Sarah. So it wasn't going to be Ishmael, who was a child that he, that he had had through Hagar, it wasn't going to be through that child that the promise was going to come, but it was going to be through a miraculous incident where God was going to open up Sarah's womb. In the passage here, it talks about that uh, Abraham reviewed himself as, as good as dead in terms of having children, and, and the same with Sarah. And God wanted to show that, that what we think as, as being possible an impossible changes when God's in the scene. And so, He gave this promise to Abraham that He was going to be the father of many nations, and that was a promise that we see that Abraham, in this passage, it says that he believed, and it was credited to him as righteousness. He had faith. And we're going to look in the passage about what faith really means. And to see that, we see in this here that it's talking also about that faith that we have and trust, that because Jesus was raised from the dead, therefore, we know that we ourselves are, are forgiven, we're justified, that's just as if we'd never sinned, and that we also will be uh, raised when, when Jesus comes back. So, it talks about Jesus coming back in this and about what we should look forward to. And so, Romans wants to teach us what we have in God and why we have that in God, and therefore the hope that we should have. And so, the promise, as we think about all the promises that we have in the Bible, we need to look at these stories of people who, who believed and had faith and trusted in the promise that they were given. So, that, that helps us to understand how we can be. We need to read those promises we need to believe them. Remember, faith for all I trust Him. Taking God's promises and daring to believe them, those are some of the things that we see about what faith is like. So, that's one P, is the promise. But where we see that it's so important is the second P is power. You see, promises wouldn't be any good if the person who was promising the things wasn't able to deliver them. But we know that God is able to deliver the promises that He, that he has in the Scriptures because of His power. We should never lose sight of the fact that God created all that we see. Even though that we have the world saying about evolution and so on, we need to be very clear that more and more scientists are realizing that there is an intelligent design. Remember, evolution is just a theory. It's not fact. And so, we need to look at the facts that, there, that God was behind all that we see. In fact, when you look at textbooks and you see the things that are in our textbooks that children are being taught, there's, there's images that show embryos from different animals and it shows them as if they're the same exactly. But the person who drew them simply drew them that way, but actually that's not the way they are. I can remember when John and I were with the children and we were going around the animal orphanage in Entebbe, 
And the guy was saying, you know, here's the chimpanzees. There's just um, sort of something like 1.6% difference between them and us. And I turned to the children and said, that makes all the difference, doesn't it? There's differences between us as male and female, but that makes it different. We need to never forget that God is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ever ask or imagine. He is an amazing God. Nothing is impossible for Him to do. Do you know the only thing that the Bible says that it is impossible for God to do is to lie. So, therefore, we trust in His Word, no one else's. And the promises that He gives, we need to take them on board, and we dare to believe them because God has the power to do what He promises. And that's what we see, that this is what Paul wants us to recognize. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God because he was fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. That's the difference. That's what makes us children of God, believing in, in God as who He is, who He reveals Himself to be through His Word, we trust in that. We trust that He uh, has done so much already to show that through Jesus coming into our world, through the incarnation that is a miracle that we should never lose sight of. But then the life that Jesus lived, showing us very clearly that He is the one that he, that he claimed to be, that He is God, that He was able to raise the dead, that He was able to cleanse the lepers, heal the sick, drive out demons. Those who saw everything that Jesus did so many times, we see in Mark's gospel that the people were amazed. The thing that stopped them from accepting Jesus as Lord was that they didn't like what He was bringing. So you see, that's the difference. They didn't like what he was bringing because they were going to lose control. The religious leaders were going to lose control. That's what Pilate says. He recognized that it was out of envy that they handed over Jesus to be crucified. Jesus is God. And he, as we read in, in Hebrews, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God doesn't change. And so, just as we see the promises of God in the Old Testament and the New Testament, we can believe that God can do the same things today. And um, we're following um, some missions that are going on uh, currently uh, in Down and Dromor Diocese through SOMA, that sharing of ministries abroad. And people have come from different parts of the world. Um, it's really funny reading some of the stories because some of the people have names like Delight and Promise. And we're sort of reading these stories. Delight was preaching, promise gave her testimony. But you, amazing things are happening. There was a woman who came to a barbecue in Bangor. Uh, she was limping as she came to the barbecue. She was talking about that she was going to have to go for operations on her two feet. Um, uh, and they, so they prayed for her. And they saw that her change between when she came and when she left. That she said she felt heat in her, in her ankles, and uh, later on she was line dancing, and she walked away completely well. You see, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, the difficulty is we, we often think about the people who weren't healed when we pray, but we should leave that up to God, and we should understand that God does heal, and we pray for folk believing that they can be healed, and we leave the results in His hands because He is a God of power. The last P is persuaded. don't know how many of you have heard stories uh, of uh, George Muller. George Muller looked after many uh, orphans uh, many years ago, and uh, this is one, one of his stories. One morning, all the plates, cups, and bowls on the table were empty. There was no food in the larder and no money to buy food. The children were standing waiting for their morning meal when Muller said, Children, you know we must be in time for school. Then lifting up his hands, he prayed, Dear Father, we thank Thee for what Thou art going to give us 
to eat. There was a knock at the door. The baker stood there and said, Mr. Muller, I couldn't sleep last night. Somehow I felt you didn't have uh, bread for breakfast, and the Lord wanted me to send you some. So I got up at 2 a.m. and baked some fresh bread, and I brought it. Muller thanked the baker, and no sooner had he left when there was a second knock at the door. It was the milkman. He announced that his milk cart had broken down right in front of the orphanage, and he would like the ch to give the children his cans of fresh milk so that he could empty his wagon and repair it. You see, he gave thanks to God for what he didn't have, but what he believed he would have. That's faith. Faith has been sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not yet see, as we read in the beginning of that passage of faith in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. And the Bible tells us clearly that without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. We need to be persuaded about what God can do, and to read the promises in Scripture and believe that those promises can be true for us. Yes, there are promises that are very specific to certain people, and we can't maybe take on board certain things to do with those, but there are so many general promises in Scriptures that we can truly take and believe. Prom the promises that God will provide for us, that He asks us to pray, Lord, Father, give us this day our daily bread. We need to trust Him for all our provisions. There are times that we can pray things, and then within a short period of time, we pray something, and then our faith starts to doubt a bit. I know that. That's happened to me too. I can remember when I was working as a volunteer for University and Colleges Christian Fellowship, and there were times when I didn't have money the Lord provided. Um, there was a time when I was in a taxi. I had to go quickly to a certain place. I put my hand in my pocket. I reached out the money. It was £3.60, and I just prayed a prayer, believing at the time. I said, Lord, I pray that this will be enough. And as the taxi went on, I could see the number was going up, and the number was going up, and I thought, I'm going to be really embarrassed here. And at one point, I was going to stop him and, and say, look, I'll just walk the rest of the way and I'll be late. But this guy reached across, he pressed a button on the machine, and it stopped at 360. And I thought to myself, I started arguing with God for the next two miles or so, thinking, Lord, he's going to press another button and it's going to be a lot larger, and what am I going to do? And when I got to the place where I was meant to go, he just turned around and he says, that'll be 360. And I, I took, took that money, I gave, gave it to him, I had some biscuits in my pocket. I said, here, here's something for you, um, for, your, for your nights going round. And I, and, I, and I got out of the taxi, and then I felt so stupid, I should have asked him, why did you stop that at 360? I'm sure I'll find out all these things, the things that have happened to us, we'll find out truly when we get to heaven, when we, when we meet Jesus. All the things, all the ways that Jesus has been working in our lives, and the things that He has done that often we don't even realize but He is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ever ask or imagine. And we've seen that just in the way that God has led Joanne and I over the past few months of, of just that pushing that He had in our life to, to put ourselves forward for, for being mission partners again. And uh, you had, whenever we sent the email to CMS, then we were thinking, oh, what have we done? And within a few days, Joanne was walking along um, the, the river walk in Enniskillen, and she was just saying, Lord, we don't even know what's around the corner. And when she came around the corner of the path, she saw a fish behind a park bench that was dedicated to someone who was a fisherman. And on this metal fish was a map of the world. But the map was upside down. So Africa was at the top, not at the bottom. And so we felt, yeah, Lord, that, thank you for that. And different things have happened between now and then, you had one, one of the instances when it came to two possible places of where the Lord was wanting us to go, we were thinking, which one, Lord? 
And uh, we were going down to Barnabas Aid in Belfast and then on to CMS office. To pick, so we picked up some, some boxes for food.gives at Barnabas. Uh, and uh, whenever they, picked, they would put them in our, our car, uh, the guy said, we've just got some new posters that have come in. Would you like to see them? Would you like them for your church? And I said, yeah, we'd love them. So we went upstairs to his office. He put the four posters on the desk. And as Joanne and I looked at them, we saw that there were people from different ethnic groups pictured in the posters, but there was nothing on it in terms of location. They had Bible verses for each of the, place, uh, each of the posters, but there was one poster, this one. And when Joanne and I looked at it, and if you see what's on the person's T-shirt, South Sudan. And so we went to CMS and we said, well, we feel the Lord's telling us it's South Sudan. And then as it came closer to the decision, they looked at the two places again and Joanne was sort of praying, Lord, would you just, just give us a sign? Uh, just confirm this. And just within seconds up on Facebook, there was a post from Fields of Life and it was about South Sudan. It's difficult moving out in faith. But when we trust in the one who has our life in, our ha in his hands, that's what makes it easier. He promises to guide us. He promises to, to lead us to places uh, where we'll have rest. It's all to do with whether or not we put our lives in his hands. There are some promises that we will never see if we don't put our lives in his hands. But when we do, we'll see these things coming about, like George Muller and, and others, people of faith who, who've lived a life that, that I get challenged by when I read stories like George Muller. But when we look to the Scriptures, as Paul is showing in this, this passage, we have Abraham, who's, who's that father of, of, of faith, who at one point he was about to sacrifice the child, and he was told, this is the child of the promise. And he was willing to sacrifice Isaac because of what the Lord had asked of him. And we read in the, later on in the, in the New Testament that Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead. And figuratively speaking, that is what he did. And so we have these people like Abraham and the stories that are written down to encourage us in our faith that we would understand the promises of God and the power of God, and that we would be fully persuaded that God has the power to do what He has promised, what He promised to them, and has promised to us. Let's live by it. Let's have faith in God, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ever ask or imagine. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your many promises. We thank you, Lord, that you are true to your word, that we can trust you, that, Lord, the things that you have said in the beginning, the things that you have said all the way through scriptures, and the things that you say to us uh, as individuals when we have our quiet times with you, that, Lord, that we can trust in you 100% because you're good, and you have good plans for us, plans to prosper us and not to harm us, plans to give us hope and a future, as you said to Jeremiah. Lord, help us that we would step out in faith more and more each day, trusting in you, that you will lead us, that you'll guide us, that you'll provide for us all the things that we see. Lord, help us. Help us that we would take those promises, and that we would dare to believe them. We ask this in your name. Amen. We sing, uh, uh, yet not I, but through Christ in me.
standing and we affirm our faith. To believe and trust in God the Father. I believe and trust in God the Father who made the world. To believe and trust in God the Son. I believe and trust in His Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed mankind. To believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit. I believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we have our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Father, we pray for the church worldwide that we all may be one. Grant that every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that your glory may be proclaimed through our lives. Heavenly Father, we rejoice that Barnabas-funded aid has become a light of hope for 2,000 Christian families struggling to survive following unprecedented flooding in Pakistan as well as giving thanks that you have graciously attended to their practical needs, we are grateful that you have strengthened them in their faith. Lord, we, can, we pray that you will continue to be with them as they rebuild their lives, meeting all their needs according to your rich, the riches of your glory in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray that you would comfort those who lost loved ones in the attack on a beachside hotel in Somalia. We pray that Al-Shabaab militants would be captured by African Union peacekeepers and pray that all Islamic terrorist groups operating in other African countries will be also captured and brought to justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the four children and two adults recovering from the brutal knife attack in a children's park in France. Lord, stretch out your hand to bring healing to their physical and psychological wounds. Bring your conviction to their attacker that although he shouted out the name of Jesus, may he and others know that it was not in your name that this terrible act was done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those known to us in need of your touch, and in the silence we bring them to your throne of grace. And we say together, 
Stretch out your hand to bring healing to those who are sick, comfort for those who mourn, and hope to those in despair. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our offertory hymn is hymn 32, O Lord my God.
So we have our closing prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, you emptied yourself, taking the form of a servant. Through your love, make us servants of one another. Lord Jesus Christ, for our sake you became poor. May our lives and gifts enrich the life of your word. And we say together, Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. O oh, most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. So we turn to one another and we say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So every blessing, Lorna and Beatrice are going to play us out.